Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another edition of uh, Work From Anywhere Talks, where we talk to uh, inspiring uh, people, experienced people, and people who've been there, done that, to understand various aspects of how they have addressed various organization challenges in their in their past life and how they are working on uh, addressing some of these interesting problems as they are uh, doing what they're doing. And uh, today, I'm, I'm honored, blessed, uh, super related, and probably sweating a little bit because I have Sukumar uh, on this chat with us. Uh, he's been a tall person in my uh, in my career at Cognizant, and uh, he's he was like kind of a true north uh, for me at Cognizant. I kind of wanted to do th things that he did, and uh, today I'm extremely extremely happy to have him. Uh, 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 after like almost like knowing him for eight years is the first time I'm doing any kind of session with Sukumar, so I'm kind of super excited about that. Uh, and today, uh, uh, this is one topic that I I couldn't think of any other person than Sukumar to talk about this. Uh, is to how do you inspire your team members uh, is something that I've always like wondered about right and I've always like look, looked at uh, emulating other people and how they how they how leaders inspire other people and, and I couldn't think of a better person than Sukumar to kind of talk about this to all of us. Uh, so welcome Sukumar. Thank you. Uh, okay. Extremely grateful for that you could kind of make time for this. Thank you, Shyam. Thank you for those kind words. Uh, you are always, always as simple as you can ever be. So, so you kind of uh, fail to realize uh, uh, you're a demigod for many of us. Well, that's uh, very kind. Thank you. Yeah. So, so, so jumping right into the topic, right? And, and just to give a background on Sukumar, I'm, I'm, I'm sure many of you uh, know, uh, but I just want to kind of give a background. And, and the background I know, right? Uh, I'm sure like his his. Uh, Pedigree is 10,000 times better than what I could kind of say. So Sukumar, uh, I got to, got introduced to Sukumar when he uh, kind of ran uh, the knowledge management initiatives for Cognizant. Uh, in fact, the first meeting that I had was when uh, he and his team conducted an unconference at Cognizant is when I got to know, introduced to Sukumar. Uh, and from then on, it's, there's been no looking back. So he ran probably uh, the biggest knowledge management initiative that I, I can probably think of uh, in, in, in of all of the IT industry that I can ever probably think of, which kind of brought everybody and anybody within Cognizant into uh, uh, the ecosystem of sharing knowledge, uh, giving before taking, uh, right? And, and kind of bringing those, uh, everybody's individuality uh, upfront into the, into the platform. And uh, subsequently he took on the mantle of being the chief innovation officer of Cognizant where, uh, I mean, he made, uh, uh, not that Cognizant was not innovative before, but then he kind of made it part of everybody's agenda to be innovative, right? And uh, not just people who had the designation of uh, kind of coming up with solutions, but everybody became uh, an innovator in their own right. And uh, credit goes to Sukumar and his team. So this is basically how he is like inspired, not just people around him, but also like people who who's never met ever before, right? And, and I'm, I'm fortunate that I've met him at least a few times. and. I've been men, uh, I've been a mentee uh, for some of his programs and all that. So, so that's the background of Sukumar. So, Sukumar, I just jump right into it, right? Um, I titled this topic uh, or this talk "Inspire to Innovate," right? So, I felt uh, this is my personal uh, feeling that uh, you can't uh, be, you can't build an innovative organization, you can't build uh, an agile uh, uh, organization that survives through multiple crises. Like, we, I mean, we've all had one crisis, right? And if you want to survive through that, you need to be innovative, you need to be smart, you need to kind of be nimble at agile and all that. So you can't have that organization till you till your people are not inspired, uh, right? That's my fundamental hypothesis that I, I, I thought, right? And what, what do you think about it? Yeah, I think it's very provocative. We did have a brief uh, discussion in preparing for this. I never thought of it that way. So I started thinking about what you said. I think it's you are making a very important insight, which I haven't quite articulated as you have articulated. And you talked about a lot of things, but you may not remember that you started posting your wonderful photos on Channel 1, and I was inspired by that. Right. That, that Actually, I think this question led me to a, probably an insight that I've had, but I've never had a chance to articulate. So I think what you are on to something very important. Right, right. I think inspiration is super important. But maybe the way we think about the inspiration itself, there is a nuance there that maybe we can bring out today. I, I'll jump right into it, uh, Sukumar. So what 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 is your definition of inspiration? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I'm not sure this is entirely correct. But when somebody, say so for example, if you ask me who inspires me, right. I had two kinds of things. The second category 
I started thinking only after you kind of put it in this way, right? Inspired to innovate. I think although I have had this in the back of the mind because I'm picking up these signals from people. If you ask me right out of the bat, who inspires you? I might say something like Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, right. Elon Musk, whoever is your current uh, favorite person who inspires you. Now, I, the thing is, so you can, so the, the thought process I want to bring out is maybe inspiration has two types. Okay. One I would call aspirational inspiration. If I can call it that, the other is actionable inspiration. Okay. Now, if you look at the broad world, we are inundated with messages from the aspirational innovation or aspirational inspiration category. Right. I mean, every time I open LinkedIn, there's an article about how great some Elon yeah. Musk SpaceX program or Tesla is or Steve Jobs, Bill Gates. Or right. Now, what I found interestingly, I didn't spot this. I only spotted this few years ago. I can't remember the exact time. But people started telling me, you are inspiring to me what you just did. Right. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. <laughs> I am not in that league at all. I am thinking Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, and where am I at? And then I realized that maybe what we are all looking for is this actionable inspiration. That is someone from within our peer group, our network, they are doing something. Right. Now, you brought up the topic of the blogs. Now, I would say I've been recipient of the inspiration from thousands of bloggers across Cognizant. Right. Right. I started seeing Cognizant Associates in an entirely new way which I had never realized myself. Right? Yeah. Before that, I'm thinking, oh, we are a software company, we write code. Right? Yeah. Or we, if I think more broadly, I will say we solve customer problems using software. Mm -hmm. But I never realized that we have such brilliant photographers, poets, artists, mimics, comedy, just storytellers. Right? There's right. just so many facets of our associates that came through for me. Mm -hmm. That I often say, I had the, what do you call it, good fortune to be able to take a journey into the minds of thousands of associates. Right, right. Which I have been quite lucky, right? I, I also started believing in this thing that there is a lucky accident, right? This That's one such. Right. Now, I don't want to give you a too long an answer, but that's something, another thing that I might tell people if there is time for that. Sure, sure. So, 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 just to kind of dwell a little bit on that, right? Uh, and ask if I, if I have to kind of put it in my own words, right? An aspiration in uh, inspiration is like the, the tall uh, role models, right? They, they kind of call the role models, right? So they kind of uh, uh, they kind of are somewhere out there. You want to be them someday, right? Uh, but uh, uh, it's it's almost like looking at a, a far off uh, thing, but then you don't know how to get there, right? Uh, but an uh, actionable inspiration is where it's now and present it's happening now and it's kind of making you do those incremental things right that gets you there right rather than kind of always looking at the destiny and say i want to get there someday but then you you may never ever get there yeah correct i mean i think facebook in the broader world since people may not be familiar with what we did inside cognizant facebook does some of that right see somebody does a half a mar half marathon and they post that's inspiring Right. That they can do that tells me that maybe I could also do. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So, or when you posted your photographs, or I still remember the kind of things that people were publishing. That's just very inspiring to me. So I think this category of actionable inspiration maybe is not that well explored in the wider world. Now, yeah. in the world that I am in, in tiny magic, which is we are trying to teach digital transformation, I think it's even more important because i think actionable inspiration is needed for anything that is not directly in your job description right right so that kind of comes me to you talking about transformation and uh, the the uh, uh, and uh, uh, sorry I, I will have to use this joke there used to be a joke at congress and saying that uh, we had a lot of operations and a lot of initiators going on right it's almost like the same patient being operated in ICU for multiple surgeries, right? And we don't know what's going to come of it, right? <laughs> but one thing that did work out is the knowledge management uh, initiative that you did, right? It kind of caught on like wildfire, right? So uh, if you have to deconstruct what happened there, right? Uh, and also 
probably with uh, the innovation uh, uh, in a group and the initiative that you led there, right? If you have to kind of, like Steve Jobs says, right, connecting the dots backwards, right? So if you have to connect the dots back backwards, um, what do you think kind of made those two initiatives, like initi an initiative that spanned uh, like two and a half lakh employees, right, across the globe from different cultures, from different upbringing, from different walks of life with different designations. Yeah. And it was not just the bottom of the rung or the top of the cream, right? It was like everybody percolating across the organization. So what what do you think kind of worked? And, and I know you will say that I didn't plan it to be this way, but it happened. That's the reality, right? So how did it happen? Yeah, so that's the thing. Lucky accidents is the same thing. We had, I think, tremendous energy in the company. It up, So I will tell you why. Maybe I'll just spend a minute on how even blogging was started. So at the time I became chief knowledge officer, the primary strategy for knowledge management was to build a repository. Yeah. Right. You build a portal, a repository and you upload documents. Now Cognizant also had a central repository by then and people were uploading content into it. Right. I looked at the access logs of that repository as well as few other repositories. So first of all, the number of documents or quote unquote knowledge that had been uploaded was not commensurate with the size of the organization. Right. Very puny to begin with. Now, even those puny little repositories, nobody was reading. Right. If you look at the download statistics on the content which was there, I found now in, in hindsight, I started calling these anomalies. Mm -hmm. It is anomaly. I was expecting there will be a lot more documents and there will be a lot more people downloading this stuff. Right, right. <clears throat> right. Well, people have taken pains to upload this. Why is nobody uh, downloading it? Right. So I realized that the emphasis has to shift in knowledge management to consumption. Mm -hmm. Not creation of knowledge, right. but consumption. Right. So I felt even if you created a few pieces of knowledge, but it is widely circulated, it will have a bigger impact. Right. Rather than lots of knowledge, nobody looks at. Mm -hmm. Now, by then, I was already a blogger. I, I probably I am in the worst blogger category, right? Uh, the blogs that I wrote, nobody even bothered to read. I did not get a single comment or maybe I never received any page views also. But I was a blogger. Yeah. So I thought maybe blogging will be a good thing. So I uh, just bought it was open source WordPress. Right. Again, a lucky accident. We made a good decision and my rationale was WordPress is free. I got hold of a server with quad CPU. If it fails, I will just shut it down right quietly. Nobody will ask. Right. But then it just took off. I think because there was a raw energy in the company, in the youngsters such as yourself and many people, it just but, spread but, virally. But took about a time out, of that, time out there, right? So yeah. you, had, you had this idea, right? Uh, uh, but See, you uh, like uh, 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 Simon Sinek says, right? There are people who realm in the wise, and there are people who realm in the house and the watch, right? So let's assume that you were you were thinking of the larger picture, and the why part of knowledge management has to change, right? And this is why it has to change, right? But how did you even? What about the? I don't know what the team size was, right? But how do you rally? How did you rally your team of like maybe ten people or twenty people that you had that time to think? the way that you were thinking right because i mean that's the i mean that's the first uh, hurdle that you face right you as a leader have a, have an idea but your, your team shoots it down or team doesn't feel that i mean they don't feel inspired enough to work on this right okay boss is saying something we we'll just do something and, and then just leave it that way right so how do you how do you inspire your own team right i mean uh, i mean all of us struggle to even do that you have gone to two lakh people but i'm not even getting there right how do you inspire your own immediate team that see you in flesh and blood every day to kind of take this radical yeah. so had i known all of this i would have thought about all that <laughs> the word inspiration itself didn't even occur to me now only you know that you have said it i mean thinking about it and connecting the dots backwards right but all it was was a experimental thing which took off now in fact one of my teammates i remember now that you mentioned this one of the guys his name was central he was he rolled out the actual word press customized it and he wrote actually a blog post on our system saying, one day I went back to the blogging system just to check, is this another portal that is dead or what is going to happen? And he is the guy who implemented the software. And so right, on. right. And then he found that the traffic was just exploding. Mm -hmm. So I think just how 
cognizant associates took to it inspired the team i am saying that in hindsight hindsight okay i didn't have to do anything saying oh we are all going to do this and you ask me what is the mistake i made that's probably the mistake i made also mm mm-hmm. i never went to the cognizant management team to say hey look we are going to do this this is how it might pan out or this is might it might not work nothing like that i did which is also the reason why it did probably not succeed even more than it did luckily right. it succeeded significantly enough that we still talk about it but i think we probably didn't uh, what do you call it exploit the full potential of that medium right lot right. more people were still left out than were inside right. so i feel if i since you asked the question in hindsight why if i were to go back and do this i would do something differently sure Uh, uh so 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 that uh, sorry uh, i interrupted the uh, you know flow of thought there so uh, one one thing I, i i from the outside right uh, i'll probably claim uh, this is i mean if i had to be the a doctor keeping the stethoscope on km and, and look at what went right right so i i feel uh, uh, i feel uh, see one I, i one thing is like inspiration is the fuel to perpetuity right uh, right you can you can force somebody to do it you can give, give a dictum or you can create Uh, a carrot and a stick right but all of it, it's like extrinsic motivation you take it off it dies right Correct. but if something kind of lives beyond uh, live, lives beyond uh, i mean you everybody everybody stops pushing it but it still continues to do that's when you are inspired to do something right you are kind of there's, there's an inner purpose through which you are yes. doing right and that's what has happened right so i feel that when you do when you do something that's larger than life right and you create something that's larger than life that has an uh, so i i is a blogger you talked about uh, right so i was inspired to use it because it gave me a personal identity that i didn't have before right yeah that's uh, fantastic uh, i again this what you are saying is new to me because i never thought about it like that so i i mean otherwise i'm i'm just another developer just another uh, like grade x person in cognizant right uh, designation y in cognizant right but i am so and so is something that Uh, I think that it's the larger, it's the kind of my identity that is larger than my own uh, work. That so that's doing, very like, insightful. So I'm very insightful. I had not thought about it like that. Right. So now coming to your second, uh, a lot more. Uh, uh, in fact, I mean, I don't say I don't say I don't want to compare these two initiatives, but something that uh, uh, probably had a lot more tangible impact to the company, uh, the management, right? In terms of numbers, this was your innovation innovation initiative, right? And I also feel that. if you had done this in the reverse order it would have both of them could have failed <laughs> so awesome so yeah. right knowledge management and then you worked on this right so how do you feel the onion on the innovative innovation related initiative and why do you think it it worked yeah so again it's a uh, it's a lucky accident again so in terms of the team that i got uh, i'll just tell everybody is when our sukumar says it's like lucky accident it means that he had an inspiring thought somewhere and he had a brilliant idea somewhere right? he kind of it's like no, i don't mean it in, uh, <laughs> i'm not uh, saying it that way it is a lucky accident only because how do you explain such things happening mm-hmm. so i learned this thing called negative visualization from i mentioned this that i was going to cover this is the probable segue into this okay lori santos of yale university has a wonderful free course on course era called the science of well being okay it's free you can do it sure right I, I took that course uh, it's brilliant so in that she talks about a technique called negative visualization which okay. is if you look back at incidents and if you can't point back how they might have happened and if they didn't happen exactly in the way they did the whatever success you had wouldn't have happened right like you just made the statement if i had done innovation first on knowledge management later maybe it wouldn't have panned out right now who controlled that i certainly didn't it's just the way the dice got rolled was rolled right so right, right. lucky accidents i think are very important so what happened is now the mistakes that we made in knowledge management we managed to correct a little bit in innovation i would say right what was the measurement for knowledge management i couldn't even get everybody to agree that this is knowledge right a sure. proper definition of knowledge itself we i haven't yet still come i have not yet seen in the world which says you and i will agree yes this is knowledge right. not just you and i the yeah. peer community in km will agree that right. itself i couldn't do measuring is next part it is yeah 
But innovation, the key thing was the innovation index, which one of my teammates came up with actually. Okay. The guy by name Eri Lanban, uh, he still leads the innovation initiative in Cognizant. So he came up with it. Why? Because my boss Chandra had the foresight to ask in one of the reviews. Yeah, all this innovation is all nice. Tell me how you will measure it. Right. So that set us into the path of, oh, that's true. We have to measure it. Right. And I realized that, okay, KM, we made that mistake. Yes, it had all this page views and anecdotal evidence. There was no formal way of measuring it. Right. So we started measuring. But there is a central insight. Like in KM, we had this insight that we have to focus on consumption. The anomaly I spotted in the innovation world is everybody was going after the big innovation. Right. Big idea, big innovation, lot of talk. In fact, every talk in the industry is about that. Right. And I have always been everybody in cognition should innovate. Right. So that means that uh, I, I figured out that maybe continuous innovation is a better way to go down that path. Right. And, and I, I think I, again the energy of the Cognizant Associates came through, right? That's right. another lucky accident. So you have to be in a company like Cognizant for you to be able to pull off something like that. Right, right. So on, on that, uh, uh, see, I, I was fortunate that uh, uh, me and my team were already doing things as things on the edge of uh, yes. what a typical. You even company. got an innovation award, a couple of remember. times. Yeah. Right. So you know, that, that behind, behind the point, behind besides that point, right? Um, see. I mean that's that that again. I, I which is why I, I feel that uh, it's like the ekalavya dronacharya kind of a thing, right? You don't realize the other other person sees it this way, right? Um, how did you? So because now this is a big, uh, a big how do you say, right? Mindset change for anybody to think that I can be innovative, right? When when all of them are looking at Steve Jobs as the innovator, right? So basically, the aspirational innovator was the Steve Jobs. Hey, how can I ever be that person, right? I'm not that person, right? So you right. always distance yourself again uh, away from it. I'm okay. You give me a job, you give me a cobalt piece of coat, right? I'll write. That's my that's that's my capability, right? But how do you make that person? How do you inspire that person to think that they can also innovate, right? Yes, you had structural programs, you had a lot of enablement programs, you had. Uh, and a lot of this, if I if I if I will not uh, if I um, probably will not be uh, wrong in saying that a lot of this was almost like a volunteer driven work, right? People yes, embedded within the accounts within. So how do you inspire? How did you and your initiative and the team inspire so many people to do things beyond what their uh, appraisal talked about, right? What they were measured on, what they were given salaries for. How? I mean, if you don't inspire, you can't get that kind of work done. Yeah, agreed. So there's okay. So what happened was we. So I was the second head of innovation in Cognizant. There was another person who who I took over from. So in fact, the innovation group team was, you can say, was his. Right. I just took over the same team and we started doing things. In the previous model, we had an external company come in and conduct the innovation, what we called the innovation capability building program, which is right. a set of techniques we would teach. And our entire budget was spent on that. We had a very small budget because we were going for a leveraged model. We didn't have an army. It was a right. very small team. So I challenged my team to say, you guys should conduct this program. Mm -hmm. So we will save that money and we can do that some other thing. So first time our my team decided to teach the program themselves, I went to say, OK, let me see how this is going. They are like brilliant teachers, right? All, all of them, right? Bhaskar, Yael, Kumar. Dr. Ram, all of them would teach it themselves. Then right. slowly, I went to the front of the uh, class at first to ask a question. I said, why are you all not innovating? What seemed like an innocent question to me at that point. Okay. Like I was just making conversation. I asked this question. Hey, you're all in this innovation class. Why aren't you already innovating? This was my uh, question. Right. I didn't even think much about it. But the answers came. 10 answers would come and we started repeating that exercise everywhere. Mm -hmm. 10 answers will come. There is no time. This is not my job, blah, 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 10 answers. And we were surprised that the same answers will keep coming no matter how many places in the world we did that question. Right. In fact, even in Tiny Magic, I still use that question and those answers still are the same. Same, yeah. Which boils points to the mindset question. Which is kind of what you alluded to. Why I don't innovate is because I think 
I have to build the next iPhone or the next iPod of my industry, which anyway requires a lot of time and money, and I don't have that, so I will continue doing whatever it is. Right, right. So we use that the answers to that question to get people to brainstorm around I don't have time, which is the principal thing to let lead them to say, hey, if you did continuous innovation, you will free up time. So that whole loop was completed as the first task in the training program. Right. So what is it for me? Had what is it for me? Right? right. So can I improve my own job, release time, which is what I just argued I didn't have. Right, right. So that cognitive dissonance shifted people's mindset is what I believe happened. Then okay. you have the innovation index, innovation fair, innovation summit. Something or the other keeps on happening, right? Talk yeah. shows on the floor. My team was just fantastic. I mean, right. it, it's just unbelievable the kind of work they were able to do. And the champions such as yourself in the various practices who did their own thing. Which I now take from your word, inspiration. Right. Which is not a word that I had ever used in this right. context. Right, right. So that is brilliant insight. Now, with your permission, I will copy this. No, no, definitely. And use it more. For sure. But see, I, I think that's the, uh, see, uh, that's what leaders do, right? I mean, uh, Steve Jobs wouldn't go to the floor and say, I'm going to, thou shall be inspired by me, right? So, right. So it just yeah. happens just the way, again, I, I still feel like the common, uh, uh, with your permission, right? Uh, 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 with with the team, and in fact, I have worked with a lot of. I had worked with a lot of uh, the capability, the ICPPs, and the people who are enabling these uh, innovation programs within the accounts, right? They all felt uh, now in this case, right, they all felt connected to a larger purpose, right? Uh, they could see that they could that the impact they could do they could they could be the multiplier within their own setup, right? They could be that a uh, link between. Uh, uh, right, the team and the uh, larger purpose, and and that's what kind of drove drove them. I, I, Akila, who uh, later on became my team member, she was supremely inspired to actually be leading yeah. that team within leading, leading that initiative within her, her own team. She felt, felt proud that she was she was the connector uh, there. Right um, now, so in each of your things that you've done, uh, Sukumar, and now with Tiny Magic also, uh, you are you are working with companies to kind of change the old ways of doing things right uh, transforming themselves and all this right so when and that's kind of almost like going against the wind or going against the tide uh, how to call it right so how do you and I, I still again bring this back up and and uh, if inspiration is not there that you're going to hit against the wall at some point in time right this this your energies are going to die at some point in time when you're going against the tide or against the wind right inspiration has to be there so what and you have now worked with like leaders from all parts of the world and all parts. so what do you think are the traits that leaders have that inspire uh, their team members? So what do what do you think they do right uh, to kind of have an inspire team that is uh, self perpetuating and feels inspired as they walk in into office every day? Yeah, it, I think it's a very complicated question because leadership is a broad topic. But building on this actionable inspiration oh. thing, whatever it is that you are trying to inspire your people about, do you do that? Yourself, right, right, which is anyway in the leadership world leading by example, example, right. But your way of saying inspiration is better, leading by example seems doesn't seem to convey the full uh, impact of it. So, if you are saying you have to innovate, what innovation are you doing before you can ask your people to say, Oh, you all have to innovate? Right. It's right. easy for me at whatever top management to say, all of you should innovate. Yes, brilliant. But what have you done, sir? Yeah. If somebody pointed the question back at me, what answer will I give? Sure, correct. So walk the talk, talk the walk. Right? Yeah, and I think you can you, you can make it seem, I think the key thing that leaders have to do is make it seem within reach. It's not too easy, but it is not so difficult that I won't even attempt it. Right, right. So the question is, I think this is what the champions in Cognizant are able to do, such as yourself. They were able to do that and make other people who are a little bit behind in the thinking feel, hey, if he can do it, I can also do it. Right, right. Right, maybe we can never do what Steve Jobs did. Because to me, it is in some other planet what Elon Musk is currently doing. Right. But if I am working for Sham and Sham is doing this, 
it feels hey, i can also try so are you able to bring that feeling into your people might be something that i might try right i am not very sure but i think i'm just trying to connect it to this question of inspiration right so so one uh, so one thing that i got from it right so is that uh, one you have to make work or you have to make the journey more challenging than the the norm right yeah. so that they kind of feel some energy drawing and they feel challenged right otherwise every day i just walk in i just do what my bit and then go but then don't make it too challenging that people kind of shun away from that and say hey, it is not my cup of tea kind of thing right uh what else have you observed so sukumar and many uh, any other uh, the way they talk the way they present themselves uh do they have to be uh, so again just again breaking it down like you have done uh, with actionable innovation right so if i have to be i i run a startup five people we're all like a small team i'm not even looking at the scale of you know inspiration that you have done with the two initiatives right just five people i just want my own five people to be inspired right not not Uh, not not inspired by me but but by what the company or the startup is trying to achieve right so how do you how do you i mean i'm sorry this is yeah. a, <laughs> no no i think it's a very, very good question about you i just want to inspire my five team members that's it right i don't i'm not looking at inspiring a nation or my community or anything larger than that yeah so if you look at the the, the third aspect of my work in cognizant is the i work we did in it department right so there we had this notion that you have to do 500% productivity gain which at first seemed absurd at the first time i said it people were like yeah right mm. how can you produce 500% productivity gain and the reason i even come up with that number is it department routinely goes to management and says we will improve productivity by 10% 5% whatever right right and then by the time you roll out a change initiative across a 200000 people organization you actually wind up with the negative <laughs> correct correct so i used to tell people don't even develop software let them do that work uh, excel spreadsheet whatever it's not worth developing software it's going to send you back right now how do you get people to do 500% productivity gain so i found uh, research and found a story on the internet which sometimes i will narrate but we don't have time today right so i took that and then the team only one team had to do it first they produce the 500% productivity gain and again see that somebody in our community in our priya group have to do it whatever it is that you are asking people to do right if you say right. i want to climb mount everest someone in the group has to have done it right 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 bachendri paul did mount everest is fine or tensing norgay did is fine but i am not those people correct correct so if you did let's say mount everest you claim mount everest i will be like yes i can also try yeah so i think we need to bring the this is the aspect of storytelling i think okay so either story- there is a story in house or there is somewhere where it is relatable yeah i feel yeah i can also try that right right and That's and, what i would say and uh, uh, did you uh, uh, again did you uh, like like you said right the first experiment within your own team has to succeed and that inspires the inspiration yeah. inspires other people right uh, and uh, uh, did, did you did you specifically make ensure that that first experiment really works or you, you, did you just let it go i think we okay so i would say initially it was a partial success it was for example what we took on was that, that i will give you an example from the it department what we first took on was we wanted to make the time sheet a one click time sheet right because it go through 6 7 pages and it will take 15 20 minutes to fill time sheet but then at first we thought that was not possible because it's a third party software so right. our team felt that can't be done but somehow they managed to do it with the contacting experts now that gave them the confidence that oh yeah this is probably doable right so at first we said it can't be done that is some type of failure and in innovation even though we talk about it now initially it was hard to convince all executives and people that continuous innovation is an important thing because people feel anyway i am innovating so what are you talking about right so that we had to overcome that through uh, many ways and so that's why it takes time 
so maybe the other thing to factor is the how much time you got right so and i but I, I think the 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 thing that this 500 person for you also since you asked me specifically about yourself right you said yourself what i started calling an extreme objective mm -hmm. you have objectives you have extreme objectives right it seems to me from the work that i have seen so far and things like that an extreme objective can be inspiring to certain types of people not right. all correct some people get intimidated and that can't be done but some people latch on to it and they move in that direction right. now that can have a pull effect on the rest of the people right initially so, skeptics won't come along right so right so 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 like uh, you in your own organization you have the crossing the chasm right you have the early adopters Right. So your team also is kind of in that bell curve somewhere. You need to pull the so the first set of people had to be inspired to kind of march, take the lead and march for march first. Uh, so uh, Sukumar, I mean, uh, for you, uh, we are at the end of the thirty minutes that we have scheduled for. So for you, um, who are your actionable inspirational sources for you? I mean, uh, yeah. So it has always been. So I mean, in cognizant, there have been several leaders, my peer group. Frank, whoever they are, my supervisors, they are also empowering, right? Gordon, Chandra, Lakshmi, everybody. My peer group, everybody were doing very inspirational things, right? So that is inspiring me. But my chief inspiration, which I didn't quite think about it in the way you said, is all our associates. Now, in my tiny magic avatar, what our mentees do every day, right? See, our application is a journaling based application. That's what we see. So we see the journals of our mentees every day. Mm -hmm. Every journal of our mentees inspires me because they are doing something that is not part of their job description. Right. They're right. taking that extra effort. So now when I look at broadly people posting on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, they did this. That does inspire me. Right. I mean, so you, the... you are an inspiration because you, have, you are doing something new. It's hard to do. Every entrepreneur that I meet is, uh, is an inspiration simply because I think this is the hardest thing one can do. If you look at the level of difficulty of management ability, entrepreneurship is at the, at the polar extreme of it. It is simply the hardest thing in management to do. Right. In a large company, it's more about yeah, there's existing, I'm going to scale it. Yeah, that brings its own difficulty. But to make something happened from nothing i think is the hardest especially if you're bootstrapped you don't have any big uh, pockets uh, funding your thing it's exceptionally hard i don't know anything that is harder in the business world right so you inspire me your team inspires me every entrepreneur that i come across i listen to their stories it is very inspired so i am very inspired to be part of this network of people well, my co-founder is there, Kumaran is simply brilliant. He comes with inspiring ideas every day. In fact, he set the vision for the company saying, we want to deliver happiness, which is kind of an extreme object. Right. We don't even know what is happiness, but he okay. decided we will deliver it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It's like something that we will hopefully figure out or we will never figure out. Right. We are always right. in this, okay, what is this happiness thing? Yeah. So, but at least this, this, this is the direction. This, this That's thing. the direction. And I think it does inspire our employees and people that we work with. Because it seems hard. I think what is hard, and there is a genuine intention behind pursuing it, I think people see it. Right, right. Yeah, I think I think that, that sums up the whole. Yeah, if you say 30% profitability improvement, that doesn't inspire anybody. Correct. I don't think so. Right. Maybe some people are, but... That kind of uh, numbers driven thing, I don't think. But if you really see that, right, that that has to be equally incentivized, right? That kind of a goal has to be incentivized, right? So it's an extrinsic motivation. Okay, you get, oh, what do I get with the 30%, right? So, so yeah. you kind of, it's always. Oh, like yeah, that. that is like you can think of them as a milestone. So right. let's say you are doing well as a company. So how do you know that? Right. It's only by revenue and profitability growth. So you can compensate people using that, or it's a milestone. Right. For example, all the disasters that we have faced in tiny magic, even in our short duration, is okay. There is no revenue. Profitability is the next question. Right. 
so yeah. yes those things are important but we can't inspire people by saying we are going to grow revenue by 200% this is just my view point okay sure. don't get right. me wrong i am not entirely convinced of that either right but i think softer ways of improve inspiring people work better right like what you are setting out to do i'll empower people to work from anywhere that's quite inspiring rather than say okay we are going to make all offices 10% more productive well that might be the way you measure this thing right but we can't make the measure itself the inspiration inspiration correct yeah yeah and uh, 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 the last question i know i actually wanted to ask this question earlier uh, and do you think that uh, this this aspect of inspiring and, and uh, this thing is uh, how how do you think is taking a hit if at all it is taking a hit with remote or work from anywhere do you think that organizations or leaders should take an additional level of conscious effort uh, to kind of keep their keep that uh, thing on right because otherwise uh, what we have seen at least right in, in the statistics are saying that loneliness disconnected from the larger purpose of the organization all that is setting in right so what in according to you what do you think should leaders take additional care if they have to in kind of keeping this uh, not just the spirit side but the inspiration uh, there and do should they consciously try and do this yeah i mean yes obviously we have to do this consciously the thing is this right uh, yeah you have to do in my opinion you have to go more overboard in talking to people if you are talking to people uh, x amount of time maybe you need to increase that by 30 40% in this new world Right. and you maybe have to have more one on ones with people that's like the softer thing the harder thing i think is uh, we use i think right majority of the organizations measure people by the number of hours they work right now that you are working sight unseen the question is how do i measure your work so maybe there is this shift towards i will measure people by outcomes okay mm-hmm. and that's not easy to do so if i were a leader i would try to get my team to work more on those how do i improve the outcomes that my team is producing because i have seen companies now start to monitor you have to turn your camera on and i should be able to see that you are clicking away at your keyboard right, right. things like this have started to happen maybe in their business that makes sense i don't know but i'm just saying i w- if if i had the opportunity and i don't work for such a company which has to track the keystrokes of people i would move more towards say hey, what is the outcome what is the output these employees producing it seems like we have uh, luckily landed again a lucky accident that has taught us all the value of people and they will work as hard wherever they are i think if anything covid has proven that Mm-hmm. because previously the running joke in corporate is whenever i work from home people laugh yeah <laughs> you remember that if you say hey i'm working from home people will be yeah right yeah <laughs> now you see people don't do that right because right. now people realize that okay yeah i can be productive wherever i am if i if i'm sincere which which is true of most people right there will be some people who are not as sincere that just nature of people so we should not build systems for those people right we should build systems for the majority of the people who are sincere right i would say vast majority of people are sincere exceptionally maybe they are not sincere or maybe they have some issue going on in their life that prevents them from being sincere right so it's always the system it comes back so if you are a leader what kind of system do you have if you are going to be operating in the same basis that you are operating in the post covid hopefully it is a post covid world and covid doesn't continue to run along with us forever right right at some point we say yeah we put this behind us yeah correct so i think there is a new management style that is required again by lucky accident and tiny magic is a remote first company although we never thought of it that way we were thinking this is how we operate so this, is, this is yeah this is the- so we never measured people how many hours they are putting in we are simply measuring people by what outcomes and that's kind of are we moving all in the right direction that's what we measure ourselves right right but i know that is very hard to do if you are in a cognizant which has whatever now 300000 people 
right so it is a complicated problem for management mm-hmm. uh, it is hard i empathize with the job of leadership and management even right. seeing people in person leadership is extremely hard yeah now we have to do this side done seen through zoom calls when the camera is turned off it's it's i don't know it's a tall ask for uh, leaders i would say right i mean leadership is already very hard now with covid it's become uh, i would say if not uh, at least one order of magnitude harder harder yeah definitely so i i'm very i am also appreciate how many leaders have taken to this and not put irrational uh, restrictions on people most companies have kind of reacted in the right way right yeah right. let right. people do they have started to gain a new appreciation of people i think a lot of good things have happened through the covid crisis yep i wish we didn't have to come through such a crisis to learn these things of <laughs> values of people but right yeah but from your perspective i think you are in the this is very important what you are doing because eventually i don't think that we can permanently work through zoom call and work from home yeah it doesn't make sense at all right, right. so but it will be a hybrid model instead of fixating on everybody showing up in my office at 9 am and leave when i say everybody should leave it uh, creates more flexibility for people absolutely absolutely that's what that's what we're kind of extremely looking forward to uh, as things unfold and we're only getting a lot of early sign indicators that that's what that's where the companies wanted to gravitate towards so pretty exciting times for us yeah, yeah. it's very nice uh, that yeah. you're on the doing something that is timely thank you so much and 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 i can't uh, thank enough for the time that you've given and the insights uh, you've been able to peel out of your experience and i know, I know we've not even uh, gotten to 1% of uh, 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 on this topic right uh, but but uh, i think it's it's, it's at least uh, uh, the only thing that we want to do is like provoke people to consciously think right uh, each one is going to have their own solutions to the to whatever they face in their own startup or business right but the que- the question is like you should know what you don't know and 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 this is one question that many of us might not know or might not have consciously thought about as to that you need to be inspiring if you are a leader you have to take care of in, in, inspiration is a product that you deliver to your team right so uh, like clarity is like purpose is like mission is right so inspiration is another product that you are deliver and and that's something that you are really consciously kind of work on right and i also like the, the biggest uh, thing that you told me towards the end is like it also work backwards right I mean, your team could be inspiring to you right and it's a, that's how the perpetuity kind of gets built in i think right so uh, awesome uh, set of uh, uh, thoughts from you sukumar as always uh, uh, and, and thank you for your thank time you. Uh, and uh, thank you i think your thing is very thought provoking i will take that with me and think some more and maybe use it in some of the work we do sure because i think inspirations you have we were hit up on something very important So that's very nice thank you for doing that that's the biggest pat on the back that i can get ever <laughs> so come but if you say that hey this is something that has made me think and i think oh, that's, that's very kind thing. i think you are brilliant you are an inspiration to me as well thank you've you done a lot of good work and i have been following you since the first photo you posted on channel one blog so yeah must be what 14 years no yeah more than that yeah 8 17 or yeah it's more than that Yeah. Thank, thank you so you, much thank you sukumar for creating channel one in the first place and otherwise i would be a no name somebody <laughs> so i yeah. am not so sure but yeah, yeah. thank you yeah thanks bye. Thank, thank you bye bye